Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mindful Minute. Today I'm featuring another guest and this person is someone who I have known for a very, very long time. Um, She's one of my best friends. We met in what, 6th grade, 7th grade? 6th grade? Sixth? Sixth? Y- yep, we met in 6th grade and um, I just really want to have her kind of chat about her self-care routine and you know, things that she is passionate about. So, Lindsay, please introduce yourself to the people. Alrighty. Um, Hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay. Um, Like Abby said, we've been friends since sixth grade, so a long time. She has been dealt with my crazy loving self. Um, Real good friendship right there, because I'm a little wild card. Um, And yeah, I'm here to talk about, like, my self-care routine and any questions that you may have, let's get it started. <laughs> okay. So the first question I kind of want to ask you is, when did you start noticing the importance of self-care? So I would say I started noticing the importance of self-care probably um, ending freshman year of college. Um, so between... Um, senior year of high school and um, the beginning of my freshman year, I kind of felt different. Mm-hmm. Um, I had imposter syndrome because I definitely didn't think I belonged um, in college. Um, don't ask me why I felt like that. I still don't know about that these days. Um, so it kind of just, I, I, I just felt defeated in college. I didn't want to keep going. Um, and then so... After that first year of college, I actually stopped attending school mm-hmm. and started working for a different company. I started everything changed. I worked. I quit my job at the time. Of course, I got a job before I quit the job because you know quit employees makes me smart. Um, and I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna focus on me. And as I got to focus on me, I realized that I've done everything for everyone else. Mm-hmm. I get to the point where what have Lindsay done for herself and stuff like that and so honestly I've been taking time and learning about like what I need to do and I realized if I'm not taking care of nobody else who's going to really be taken care of um, so right. I really been on um, my self-care the past couple of years and I definitely feel like I've been in a better situation ever since I saw that for sure Lindsay, I know that you, you know, were kind of faced with a little bit of a struggle, um, what, two years ago, almost? Yep. Yeah, two years ago. Um, And I will definitely say, as your best friend, I noticed that, like, the Lindsay that I know now, especially because of what you were going through then, is so, so much more, well for obvious reasons, which you know why, but, like, you know, I can tell that you really kind of made, took that thing that you were dealing with, and although it was hard for you, you kind of noticed that, like, it's important that you also, you know, kind of show yourself love, um, so can you kind of, like, talk to everybody about that situation, if you're comfortable? Oh, sure, most definitely, so, um, the situation Gabby is referring to for everyone that's watching is so in 2020, you know, the unspoken, the unspeakable year for everyone, you know, everybody life turned upside down. Um, that Christmas, um, on Christmas Day, I actually lost my grandmother, and my grandmother is like was definitely my best friend. Like, you, you can tell nobody could go to my grandma and be like, Oh, Lindsay did this. Oh, I already know. And I told mm-hmm. her, too, what you going to do about it? Uh, so we definitely had that relationship. Uh, so I lost my grandmother to uh, a, rare, a rare disease um, on Christmas Day. Um, a few weeks after that, let's say January like 20th or something like that, uh, my mom got sick um, due to COVID and all that good stuff. And she was on a ventilator. And just seeing her and my grandma in the same state, I was just, I was really down and out. Um, 
as well as my mom being in the hospital, I also got sick with COVID. Um, and I was in quarantine for a whole entire month because I caught a real bad case of it. Case of it. Um, and then once I was out of quarantine, I was able to see my mom. She was in the ICU for about a month and a half and had a hospital stay for about roughly three months. Um, so definitely uh, from waking up in the middle of the night from the nurses, um, they're like, hey, your mom need a blood transfusion. Oh, your mom's not doing so well. Um, definitely hearing those phone calls, hey, um, your mom may not make it and stuff. I definitely, I became very concerned with my mom. Mm-hmm. Point where I would just keep going, 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 going. I was working full time. If I wasn't home, I was on my way to the hospital and all that. And I realized I was eating and this and that. So I kind of got a little bit sick again. And mm-hmm. my family called me and they was like, hey, what's going on? We noticed you looking a little bit, uh, a little bit um, pale these days. I said, like, I feel fine. I got over the COVID and stuff. He said, but have you been drinking your water? You know, and I honestly, Gabby could attest to this too. She called me a few times. She's like, girl, you don't sound, you don't sound like yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so definitely, um, I noticed that I couldn't take care of my mom if I wasn't well. So they got me onto this routine where I was taking my vitamins to help you know, build my immune system back up and making sure that I take time for myself. So like a few of my family members, they actually was like, we're coming down on this date. Um, we love you, but we don't want to see you in your house. We staying in your house. Um, <laughs> you might be like, wait, what you mean they don't want to see you in your house? It's because I, me and my mom, we stay together and they was coming down to help me with my mom so I can get a self-care weekend. Um, so actually, for one of my trips, I went to the zoo. First time I lived down, I lived down in the Carolinas for about ten years, and that was the first time me ever going to the zoo. And just the drive, I was like, just the drive was amazing. I felt one with the fresh air, the nature, and all that good stuff. And kind of that day, I realized, even though I'm taking care of my mom and stuff, I need to, you know set time for Lindsay like um give Lindsay some time let Lindsay you know heal up you know refuel you know you don't want to get somebody you don't want your phone to be on two percent you get somebody at one percent and you left on the one percent um so I definitely learned that on that trip like you know what I need to do like it was I've never felt so recharged in my life after that trip and so that's something I incorporated into uh, my self-care routine is making sure I'm able to take a drive or just have a lengthy time. Um, one thing I do on the way home from work, it takes <laughs> like 45 minutes to get home and I get home at a decent time. I just sit in my car, to be honest with you, before I even get up the steps. Most people are like on the phone. Oh, yes. Definitely with Gabby on the phone sometimes, you know, on my low five music, you know. Some Lizzo, all that good stuff. So, a good old Christian contemporary music. Like, we ain't gonna talk about my music playlist, so that's a little, you know, a little interesting. <laughs> but <laughs> I sit in my car and I just, I just feel comfort. That's kind of why, um, why actually Gabby named my car, she named her Serenity, because every time I'll be on a, if I was on the phone, she like, you home? I was like, yeah. Like, or are you in your house? I was like, No, I'm in my car, but I'm home. She's like, You're getting this. I was like, But I'm home. That's all that matters. I got home. She's like, Oh, she's like, You always in your car. I say, I kept like I tell Gabby, I said, That's my peaceful time. I just sit in that car. Um, sometimes watch a little show in my car. Sometimes I literally just sit there and I'm quite quiet and just enjoying the relaxation you know the decompressing and listening to the music um I've definitely become more church and state when it comes to work um uh, I leave it I leave it I leave everything at work at work um if Gabby can kind of tell you um I definitely 
I'm a workaholic and I had to learn to, you know, how to, um, learning my self care routine. Sometimes it's just in the car. Some days I'm in my room just laying in my bed, just like. No, but yeah, I think it's funny because, like, it's like Lindsay said, like, she'll call me when she's heading home from work or when she's, like, at the grocery store or whatever. And I think one of the things about our friendship that has really shown me the 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 change that both of us had made had made over the years of being friends and just our individuality of you know from each other I think it's the the comfort of being on the phone and doing whatever you you are doing and like having your one of your best friends like just there you know because Lindsay and I don't get to see each other I haven't seen her in almost six years I think because you came in what 2013 2014 ish yeah yeah so it's been a while and I haven't seen her in a long time but like Lindsay and I can go from talking about about literally like one topic to the next to talking about just anything that's that we just come up with and I think that like with with me I've learned and I think she kind of has has learned it too for me also is that like you know, setting that limit. You guys saw I put up an episode the other day talking about setting boundaries. And, you know, it's it's like with Lindsay, like, I'll just be like, hey, like, I'm really tired. I love you. I care about you. But like, I can't like chat right now just because I need some time. And I think that she's also kind of been like, okay, you know, she'll be like, girl, like, go get your rest. And, and I think that we've kind of learned that that kind of limit from each other. You know what I mean? Yes, definitely. And I, it's so funny because, like, Lindsay thinks that I don't know her as well as I know her <laughs> because <laughs> because she'll – we'll be talking and then there's a certain point where Lindsay – it's just her – it's just her time for her to, like, be off the phone and go to sleep. Like, <laughs> it's just – she has, like – I don't know what it is. It's been like this since we were younger and – I've always noticed it with her because after like 9.30, 9 o'clock, Lindsay's petty side starts coming out, y'all. And I'm just like, girl, you need to go to sleep. She's like, I'm not tired. And then five minutes later, she'd be like, girl, I'm dozing off. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm like, did I not tell you that like five minutes ago? So, um. Petty, though. Just my, my sleepy ego comes out. It okay, she, yeah. If that's what you want to call it. Sleepy. Her ego is sleepy, so therefore Lindsay has to go to bed because the ego sleepy. Yeah, but I'm not petty. Dude, he I mean, you know. I can't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> I know. But um I think over the years we we both kind of learned. Um, like for me it's about for me it's really about the time that I get to take to just be on my own and just kind of like have the space and time that I need. And I think that like for, for the longest time, I just didn't know what mental health was either. You know, throughout high school, I was always upset. I was always sad about something into college. I was very isolated and it wasn't until like my sophomore year, but I was like, Oh, well, I don't really like how, I'm treating myself. I don't feel, you know, so great about the choices I'm making. And so from there, I kind of started to notice patterns and kind of say like, no, I don't want that to still be the same. I want to be able to be better and do better, you know? Um, So yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely about growth. Would you not, would you agree, Lindsay? Like it's it's about growth and learning about the things you, you like and the things you don't like. I definitely will agree. It's about growth. If you had told me about five years ago, this is where I'll be. I'll be like, girl, you're lying. <laughs> I mean, girl, you really lying, girl. I don't know why you trying it, but this ain't it. <laughs> so what are some of the things that you do to practice self-care and self-love? I feel like I haven't really mentioned the self-love part in here just yet. So let me start off with self-love. Um, I'm really like an energetic, funny person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess you could 
you definitely can't trust with that. You never know what's going to come out of my mouth. Yep. And so I, so one of my things is like, people are like, how you doing? And I can say I'm okay. But sometimes I'll be lying when I say okay. Mm-hmm. I'm doing fine with my current situation. It's different expression. Like, okay, that's good that you're doing fine. Let me know if you need anything. But actually, like, one of my favorite things I say, well, they be like, how you doing? So I'm feeling fine like a glass of wine, honey. And mm. that's, my, that's my expression, that I'm, I'm feeling good in my current circumstances. I'm living my life. I'm loving my life. Um, so, like, some of my self-love routine is, like, just saying, you know, saying those positive quotes and making up some crazy things, like, feeling fine like a glass of wine. Um... I don't know where I got that from. I think I was. I think I, I think I was having a glass of wine that night. <laughs> I'm weak. First time I had it. Um, but like for self love, like I make sure that I treat myself good. Um, I, once in a while, I dress up. Actually, last week I dressed up and went out with one of my friends. Girl, I I looked myself in the mirror. I said, "Who that shit?" <laughs> Little red suede um, dress on, little little shink thing, you know, little something, something. Mm-hmm. I remember, um, my mom's like, Who you getting dressed for? You got a man? I said, Honey, I don't got no man. I dress up for Lindsay. Lindsay, honey, only person I need to put, only person I need to put for myself. Right. Because if you don't love yourself, you won't love anyone. Anybody else, exactly. I, I love my little self care with my self love where I dress up, like I'm doing my routine. Um, some of my routines, like I said, I, I I'll be in the car with my I'll be in the car. Um, sometimes I'm laying in a room. I'm listening to my serenity music. Um, I'm currently working on another project where um to help me get back into school, um, get the stuff back. Um, in the upcoming week, mm-hmm. practice that self care, that self love, that self motivation. I'm kind of doing like a little calendar where each quote I have to take in order to get my bachelor's. I'm getting my bachelor's in business management. I have to complete 30 classes. Don't ask me how many credits I feel like doing those calculations because you know those credits be messing with you. I need something more realistic because I, I got 35 classes that I need to take to get my bachelor's of science. And when I do the thing, I do the thing. Um, right. But for my 35 classes, each class will get a quote. And as I complete that class, I pull the quote down and read it to myself and I put it in my little memory jar. So I'm working on that where I'm finding all my quotes and I'm going to plaster it on my wall. Um, so one of my um one of my things I love to do is when I if feeling down, I just I stare off into my wall. So my find myself doing a lot of painting um, like words of affirmation. So I did like a painting. Um it was like a blue and gold with, with silver painting. Um it was freedom, you know, and I'm definitely finding that loving myself care for myself gives me a freedom that I couldn't imagine um and then I have another picture where I painted it was like fearless and I'm facing my fears honey if you had told me I was getting back in a school I was like y'all lie once you stop you don't want to go back I kid you not um and another painting I did was faith and it just it provided me the strength to you know want to get back um get closer um, I finally got back into church, and for me, that's a part of my self-love routine is having that foundation mm-hmm. difficulty and dealing with my religion. Um, I'm unpo- I'm unapologetically Christian. Uh, <laughs> I definitely will say that. I love my religion. I love my faith. Uh, most people, when they meet me, they're like, you're Christian? I say, yeah, what's wrong with that? Right. I say, what's wrong with that? I can't love God. Period. You know? 
And they just like, but they just be like, no, it's not that you can't love God. It's just like you have such a, you're not just, I remember actually, I remember one time in high school, this guy, um, I was a church girl in high school. Don't ask me how I became a church girl in high school because Lord, I knew um, I had some issues. And, but I was so, and that's with my faith. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get in church. I'm going to read this Bible. Y'all, I'm tell you this how, when I first started, when I first became a Christian, I'm going to tell you right now, you can be like, oh yeah, you like John 3.16? And I'll shake my head, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And look at somebody that been going to church for a minute. What's John 3.16? Uh, I probably know what John 3.16 is though I will say that for me church is a part of my self care routine it's where I go to get that scripture you know feel that loving relationship that bond Uh, get my like it's like it's like I'm a car you know Mm mm-hmm and I go to church to get the scriptures to fuel me up for the week. Right, yeah. exactly, exactly. I got I hold a lot more mileage, so I got I got a good week or so before I need a fuel up. Just about a week and a half, but I do try to I get I get there every third I not every Thursday every Sunday, um, and I just enjoy the sermon. Like I I listen to music. Like I was telling Gabby the other day, y'all. I was listening to some um, a new artist that was at my church, and I was like, "Oh, this is good! Mm-hmm. I ain't never thought I liked this, and all that good stuff." I just, I've been learning. I just, I've been learning more about me each and every day. Um, I'm learning that I'm not into that. I, not into rap. I will definitely say that. Um, learning that, about, but I'm learning that. I like different cultural music. I like learning about different um, um, ethnicities and, you know, different painting techniques, uh, different home gadgets that a person can have in their house that can make their life a lot more easier. Don't judge me, y'all. Don't judge me, honey, because I ain't going to judge you. It ain't my business, so you don't judge me, I don't judge you, you know? <laughs> but just as a aspect of it, um, yeah. I'm going on tangents because I'm nervous, y'all. So y'all got to be with me. <laughs> I think also I learned about the importance of prayer. I learned about the importance of having a relationship with God. Now, listen, if you are not, you know, religious or into the faith that me and, and Lindsay are discussing, feel free to skip forward if you need to. But no, for no. the Don't skip but forward. also, you can't yeah. skip you can't skip forward i would tell you right now i was in your position okay if you are not religious you're not faithful it is nothing to be ashamed about okay like that's true i i have a few friends and i make sure like i'll tell you this right now i have a few friends that are atheists right Mm -hmm. i think they always they they always look at me weird because I will say I'm not your typical Christian, okay? You know, um, believe in the Bible. I believe that's the word. I, I believe, you know, um, I personally don't believe, I, no, not I personally don't believe. I believe that, you know, um, gay, um, gay marriages, you know, I don't believe gay people should be together. But hold up, because you're probably looking at me sideways. You're probably looking at me sideways, but let me finish. But I believe that's none of my business as well. And so, like, I kid you not, I have a good one of my good friends that I've known for roughly um, probably a year less than I've known Gabby. We have the best relationship. And I remember he was like, he was, he was so afraid to say that that he was gay. And I kid you not. He came up to me, Lindsay, I got something to tell you. I was like, Shut up. 
think about time you came out. He said, you're not mad. I said, well, I got to be mad. I said, if someone loves you enough, they are going to pass your flaw. They're going to bypass any flaws, any sin that you have created. Because, honey, I know I'm not. And I, used, and I told him this. I said, I am not perfect. I may believe that, you know, I may not believe in your lifestyle, but I'm going to respect your lifestyle and I'm going to love you for who you are. Because at the end of the day, you may believe that I don't do stuff the proper way. And I'll tell you right now, I ain't innocent, okay? I got to behave myself for some days. Some days I got to repent of my sins. Some days I really do. Maybe like twice a week. But, you know, that's that's beside the point. But you just have to, you have to find that, please, don't let somebody faith and religion if they talk about it, don't let them deteriorate. Don't let them tear you away from things. You know, keep That's that. Because I definitely, I learned a lot from my religious friends. I've learned a lot from my agnostic friends. And I learned a lot from my atheist friends. Shoot, I remember one time, one of my friends, he said, one of my friends came up to me. And I'm not the one that, I'm not the type of chick to be like, oh, I'm a Christian. And you, you, you got to be Christian so we can talk to each other. No. I don't know tell you, chill, like, look, we still gonna, we still gonna be friends. You respect me, I respect you. You know, we go. I'm respect is automatically given with me. Trust is automatically given with me. Like, you know what? I trust you. I respect you. Let's let's get to know each other. Like, I remember one time I had one of my good, one of another good friend of mine that I worked with. Um, my friend he he's trans, and I said it correctly because transition two male, so trans trans male. Gotta make sure I get it correct. Um, he's like, I want to go to church with you. I said, you want to go to church with me? He's like, yeah. I said, come on. I'll meet you. Not there. Uh, I said, come on. He said, you ain't going to be embarrassed. Why am I going to be embarrassed? Why? I, and he was like, you ain't embarrassed? I said, I'm not embarrassed at all. I said, at the end of the day, the church is not a home for the saints it's a hospital for the sinners the only reason why i go to church is because honey i need some healing i need some and if you don't want to and you want to come back you can if you're not if you don't want to i'm not going to hold that against you but you deserve to be loved and i'm going to love you you know you never let that deteriorate you from you know with the faith and religion back with somebody have a faith religion background because if they real and they say they're going to love you for no matter what. Because whatever you got going on between you and um whatever belief you believe, you know. If you yeah. do believe there's God, then and between you and God. A couple gay people in my life that I'm very close to. And I would say the person that I have in mind um, specifically goes to church. and And honestly... He's blessed, you know, and I think that like, you know, when people say, you know, do you see God in this person or, you know, is this person someone that is whatever? And I find that this person is one of the most kind hearted people and one of the people that is always giving to others and is always loving others and always accepting of others and and I think that like if you're at a point where you don't feel like you're strong in your faith or you lost you lost kind of hope I think that it's important instead of running away from going to church instead of running away from from prayer I feel like that's the moment when you need prayer even more you know I won't lie, I've had moments in my life where Lindsay can tell you the other day where I just was on the phone with her and I cried because I just realized that what I was experiencing at that moment was the moment where I needed to pray and the moment where I realized my importance and the reason for why I go to church. And yes, I also need some healing from things. But I also believe that, you know, praying to God is my way of having a conversation 
when I don't want to share things with other people, you know what I mean? And it's not to be, like, secretive, it's just that there's things in your life where you're just like, yeah, I don't want to be able to have that conversation with people, but I still feel like it's important for me to share it with someone. And if you're a Christian, if you're a Catholic, and, you know, you find yourself feeling like you're not in a place where you feel that connection to God, I really strongly believe that that is when you need to go to church more, pray more, have a conversation. You don't always, I mean, listen, I'm not going to lie. I don't always get the chance to go to church and I always feel really bad about it. But I also know that I can simply pray to God and say, you know, forgive me for not being able to make it to church today or just having that moment of of peace. I think when you're by yourself, when it's just you and your thoughts at the end of the day or before you begin your day, that's the moment where you need to be like, okay, he's there. He's listening. He's going to listen to what you have to say. And truthfully, I have come a long way with my prayer journey and with my my faith journey because I wasn't always consistent in going going to church and I wouldn't pray as much as I as I do now. And granted, sometimes maybe I'm a little tired and I don't always want maybe not not that I don't want to. But you know what I mean? It's like sometimes you just get that to that moment where it's like, okay, I don't know if I'm going to pray at this moment, but knowing that you have that opportunity and that freedom to still have that conversation with God, you know, I think that that's special too, and that that really will help you to figure out your journey of faith and your journey of prayer, and um, I think one of the things that's really helped me also is having a friend, or two friends, as a matter of fact, that are, you know, who believe in God and who are, and, you know, who go to church and pray. And those two people, well, Lindsay's one of them. Those are the people that you need to be around too, for the people that may be listening that aren't as, you know, into their faith. Those are the type of people you need to be around. You need to find people that are supportive and that will help you to kind of say, Hey, you know, have you gone to church this weekend or did you pray this week, today, whatever it is? Because honestly, like sometimes I'll just go to Lindsay. I'll be like, listen, like I need you to just give me some advice or whatever it is. And I think that having a good friend like her, knowing her for so long, I think I've seen the change in both of us of just our own personal individual journeys, but also like our friendship and how our friendship has grown. You know, you notice so much when you're friends with someone for this long you know what I mean and you you get to learn about that person like I told you guys Lindsay is you know has her moments but nonetheless we can still sit down be on the phone and laugh at that and know that like as your best friend I'm still gonna be there for you and I'm still gonna hear you out and and I think that just also knowing what what really is important to you, whether that's faith, whether that's whatever it is that you think you're lacking in your life, I think that those are the moments when you need to kind of really kind of face it and say, well, yeah, maybe I don't feel like I'm really good at praying. Go to church. Talk to the pa- to the pastor, to the bishop, or whoever you need to talk to, to feel like you can have that better connection, that better relationship, um, and yeah. Look, y'all heard my story, I told you, somebody said, oh, John 316, I said, who John? You know? Um, yeah. It's all about, you know, it's never about where you come from or where you end up, and you just... You know, a good church home will bring you love and care, and definitely. And if it's not for you, yeah. it's not 
or you. We can't. Nobody would judge you for that. All that. Right. Um. So yeah, Lindsay. Um. Is there anything else that you want to share with everybody before we wrap up? Um. Any funny stories? Any anything? I said any funny stories that you got. I don't know. I was just thinking about just you us. know, y'all. I told, <laughs> gonna be my, I told him when when the time is right, I get married. Um, she's gonna be my maid of honor, but she can't speak at my wedding. Why can no. I not speak at your wedding? No, too much, girl. You know, okay. too much. <laughs> Yeah, like, was- you know too much also, so I don't know. Uh-huh. I said, you know too much about me, too, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, as long as you don't bring up that one thing, I think be good, but shoot, yeah, I know too much, you know. About the day I did the rubber band challenge, ooh, that was funny day. My face hurt, though. I think before we wrap up, I want to talk about um the just dating with the you know on your side of it and just like how i view it um excuse me what is going on um because i think that hmm i said we talk about my virtual whole tendencies i cannot with you so dating and one thing that will definitely when it comes to dating, I mean, when I first started dating, I was like, "Can you make me happy? Can you lo- can you give me the love I need?" And now that I know the answer, uh, I would definitely the love I needed was self love. You know, so mm-hmm. I had to make myself. I was putting on a I was putting on a burden for someone giving someone a burden that they could never, you know, handle because I needed to love myself. I needed to, you know, make myself happy. Also, definitely now as I start getting back into the dating world, um, um, I would definitely say like self-love. I I, I feel, I love myself. I honestly could say, you know, I wake up every day and I was like, oh girl, yes. Yes, thick thighs. Uh, you know, pretty thick. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I just I I joke around and like, you know what? I love myself. You know, somebody like I would joke around. Well, some people be like, that's not like an insecurity when you be like, oh girl, you you a big girl. Uh, so I I'll tell you right now, I say that I'm a big girl. I mean, you know, it ain't it ain't insecurity. It's a realization. I am not no spring chicken. I I'm not no skinny girl. I'm not no medium sized girl. I'm a big girl, okay? And I came to realize that's a part of my self-love. Like, okay, honey, you gonna learn you gonna love this meat on your bate, you know. And I've become more comfortable in my skin. So that gives me an extra boost of confidence, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely sure. that in my dating because I'm not looking for no man to be like, oh, you're beautiful. I mean, I know that. No, I'm beautiful. beautiful, right? You know, now I'm at that point where I know I'm beautiful. Yeah, but can you match my? Can you match my intellectual side? Uh, right. Can you give me that sense of humor that I'm looking for? Are we compatible? You should never date someone if you're not happy with yourself and you're not in love with yourself because that is one unfair to them, unfair to you. Like, cause you're not getting to realize how good you are. You're not realizing your full potential. Once you know your potential, then you start thinking, like, "Oh yeah, that don't be too Period. high." Yes, that's your standards, honey. Thank you for for being here for joining me. Um, do you want to like tell them your social media, your Instagram? I would, but I don't know my social media or Instagram. <laughs> Off the top of my head. Girl, I know your Instagram. How do you not know your Instagram? People. Send it to the people. Her Instagram is at finding lens. Oh, there it is. There it is. Really? 
Really? Look. Y'all, do you see what I have to deal with? <laughs> if you guys want to be featured here on the podcast, reach out to me on Mindful Minute underscore on Instagram. Um, and I will chat with you guys soon. Lindsay, I appreciate you being here. And um, I will call you. What? It's been my pleasure. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Bye, everyone.